So here's the thing, homeowners, homebuyers, investors, we all want to find that perfect property to move into and to eventually sell for profit. And we want to make that purchase in a place with affordable, safe, quality homes, communities, and businesses. Why? So we can actually enjoy our lives, take vacations, and spend the quality time we want with the people we love. How do we do all this without risking a fortune and running ourselves ragged? That's the big question, and this show is dedicated to the answer. I'm here with Gordon Price, uh, fellow with uh, Simon Fraser University, the, Ce- the Center for Dialogue former city councillor in Vancouver from 1986 all the way up to 2002. That's four terms. Former director for the city program at SFU and prolific content producer for his blogs Price Tags and his podcast Price Talks, uh, though he claims to be retired. Gordon, thanks for making the time. Welcome to Vancouver Real Estate Today. Thank you for those great plugs. (laughs) Pricetags.ca? I think that's what you were. (laughs) That's what I was going to say, pricetags.ca. Well, so thanks for joining us. Uh, can you start by maybe telling the audience a little bit about yourself? I know you're very well known in Vancouver, but maybe for the uninitiated. Right. You covered off most of it. But I'll tell you two things about myself that I think has given me a particular perspective. Uh, one is I'm from Vancouver Island. I'm an island guy. And, mm. you know, not to get too deep into it, but I do think it gives you a different perspective on the world. Mm. A bit removed. And likewise, being gay. Uh, you're part of the world that you're in, but you're still a little separate from it. And what I think it does, like being on the island, is it gives you a special appreciation for the environment around you. I've always been interested in that. Joined the Sierra Club when it started back in the 70s. And learning about cities and the, the world that we're in, and then to get elected and, in a sense, make the decisions about how that's going to happen, see the city change as a consequence, and continue to live in it has been the best thing about what has happened to me in my life. That's fantastic. And you're a West End boy. West End boy. But now correct me if I'm wrong, but you, there was four years you didn't live in the West End. It's true. So what happened? Where did you go? Uh, my husband moved up from Oregon. He sold his place. I sold mine. And we were looking around. And as it happened, uh, Con- uh, Concord Pacific had built really the first high rises at Davy and Pacific. And they were big suites, 1,400 square feet, two parking spaces. And back in those days, you'd, they were buying and selling in the 200s. And it was great. I could go and live in the neighborhood that, in a sense, I was present at the creation for. Yeah, the yeah. planning that started in around 88, the official development plan that I, I was a council that approved to watch the design and not only make decisions about it, but then have the opportunity to live in it and see that new neighborhood turn into whatever it was it was going to turn into with a front row seat. And what years were you living there? It would be uh, 88, no. (laughs) This is what you have to remember. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, it would be about nine. 98 to 2002, somewhere in there. Fantastic. Yeah. So you got right towards the end and of the And then we realized that we're going to be building the Canada line right below our bedroom. Oh, so you got <laughs> out of there. the station. Well, that, and, uh, and I did miss the West End. Mm. I got to say, I've been around the world enough, and I've looked at similar kinds of mid-century modern neighborhoods, high density, high rise, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. They've aged pretty well, and the West End may be the best of all. It may be the best example of its kind in the world. And, hey, I haven't been enough places to say that unequivocally, um, but I got a hunch. Interesting that you say that because was not the West End uh, kind of the bane of Vancouver for a long time? People said, don't do this. Like, just don't do the West End here in my neighborhood. still is. Yeah. High rises. So here's how I think it happened. This is mid-century modern. These are the days when you send in the bulldozers to clear neighborhoods for urban renewal or just rezone them. And we did in 1956. And we got not only the West End, but Ambleside, Mm -hmm. a little bit of Lougheed, even parts of Burnaby and Richmond. You can still find those mid-century 1960s concrete blocks. There was nothing really that great about the architecture. This Mm -hmm. was reinforced concrete just piled up. And people by and large hated it. (laughs) We (laughs) just bulldozed all the previous heritage, all the houses, the wooden houses, the mansions, Mm -hmm. filled in the gardens, paved it over, put in the parking, along with the freeways. And we could look to the south 
and see the disaster, the social disaster of those concrete jungles that were built as public housing and occupied by the poor mm -hmm. and the black. And they were social disasters. You can't take a whole bunch of poor people from, by and large, rural or small town environments and put them in high rises in the mid, mid city without the support, the services, the connections, and expect good things are necessarily going to happen. So people generalized from that to think that, hmm, it, it must be the urban form. It's the density. It's the high rises. It's rats in mazes. It's concrete jungle. And it's going to produce social dysfunction. Oh, and look, hookers on the street corners, mm. uh, gays. Right, All these aberrations that we don't want anything like near us, not when we're raising our kids. So you can see it got a very bad reputation. Yeah. In 1972, three, no more high rises. If you look around Vancouver and you try and find a high rise that was built in the late 70s or 80s, you're not going to find one. The council of the day, team council in 72, started really the downzoning of all the old streetcar neighborhoods that were scheduled to be turned into West Ends. And as you can see in part of Kitsilano, the little fourth, seven high rises. Mm -hmm. That stopped until the condominium boom in the late 80s. I can remember the first one that we approved on Burrard Street. And it turned out that the building form itself, the high rises, the density, not only wasn't the problem, or social issues behind this time of change, it looked like it actually worked pretty well. Hmm. Here you had people dense enough to support local services. You had transit that was frequent. It was a walking neighborhood. It had lots of street trees and little setbacks. It was aging well. It had a mix of uses, a mix of people, a mix of income. It checked off pretty much everything that by the 1990s and 2000s we thought was pretty good to go into a neighborhood. Yeah. So Concord and the mega projects are our versions of the West End. I'm seeing some parallels to what's going on right this moment. Kind of a moratorium on building for the moment, whether it's due to public consultation and people not wanting that in their backyard. Some of the economics right now, people not wanting to build. Uh, it's funny we're talking about these uh, concrete buildings that were not architecturally significant, uh, and, and we we just well, took awful. we just took down one, did we not? The, yeah. Down in the West End. Yeah, we can we can take those suckers down, and people aren't going to care much. That's well, that's something to be it's said like, about it's that. It's kind of like the Vancouver Special. You know, we should keep examples of them, mm. and we will. I mean, it's it's concrete it's reinforced concrete yeah these buildings these mid-century modern buildings to give you the most recent example of what i've seen uh would be the white city in tel aviv in the 1930s and 40s when jews were coming from many places in the world by the hundreds and the thousands they needed housing and and so the german architects who were fleeing germany uh the bauhaus they built in that modern style four or five story uh, concrete buildings, very similar in some ways to the walk-ups that we have that we mm -hmm. made out of wood, same era. Yeah. And they turned them out by the thousands. Well, it's still a great neighborhood, and those buildings have survived, and they constantly get updated and used. The model turns out, where you find it in other places in the world, I can think of other examples, Ipanema in Rio, uh, there would be places in almost every city, Santa Monica. Uh, what would be in a, oh, yeah, well, these mid-century modern neighborhoods, Miami, uh, they are really standing the test of time so that the idea is not only to build in a Concord style, but to think about what you could do in now the parts of the city where we're going to have to accommodate growth. Mm -hmm. Now, this is pretty radical stuff, Josh. This idea hasn't really surfaced at all. But we built the West End by basically going in and bulldozing it. There isn't much left of the original heritage. You can't do that in Vancouver, in almost any neighborhood. You can't go in and say, as a matter of planning, we're going to change the scale and character of your neighborhood. After, after this changes, you're not going to recognize it, but we're going to accommodate thousands of more people, and we'll do it in a way that's more affordable. These will be simple buildings made out of concrete or now wood, uh, and we'll do it on such a scale, hundreds of them, that it will actually seriously address the housing crisis. We are going to do Caresdale. Mm -hmm. Think around 41st, Caresdale or yeah. Buddhist, 
right? What is it? It's a little West End. Three blocks on either side of 41st where the streetcar ran are the same identical kinds of high-rises. And again, it all stopped by the 70s. It's great. It supports 41st Avenue, makes it a village, provides a different kind of accommodation, buildings well-maintained, it's quiet and green, it's got good transit, what's not to love? Mm -hmm. Where could you do that again? Well, let's look at some of these areas uh, more out of the downtown core, obviously. We can think of Collingwood, also the And what was there before Collingwood? Old industrial buildings, well past their (laughs) best buy date. Yeah. Basically land that you could clear and no one would say, it's my neighborhood. No, it's an industrial area and right next to a SkyTrain station. Mm-hmm. What was on the Concord site? Rail yards, Coal Harbor, rail yards. Yeah, right? same with the shipyards in North Van. Absolutely. We can go in and do that kind of thing on large sites, mega projects, 50 acres or more, comprehensively plan, provide for a full set of amenities. We are really good at this. Its roots are in the West End, and these are the contemporary versions of them. Can you go into an existing neighborhood? Let's take, say, Kensington, mm-hmm. the southeast quadrant of the city, and, and say to the people, this is going to be a radical change. We're going to build something like Carisdale. Now, let's talk about how we can do that and maximize the benefits to you. But that change is going to occur on a scale similar to what we did back in the 60s, only we're going to do it a lot better. Can you say that? My answer politically at this point was not a chance. Not a chance. Yeah. Right? It's too much disruption, too radical, and we're too cynical. <laughs> so what we're going to continue to do is build out the regional town centers, the SkyTrain stations. That's the versions of the West End now in the decades to come. Mm-hmm. And we're, you can see Brentwood. Look at the massive change there. Metro Town, of course, Surrey Center. This is the regional plan going back to the 70s. It has worked real well. But there's a bargain involved. Burnaby in particular in the 70s designated those areas for apartment districts and has consistently built them out, knowing, expecting SkyTrain to come. There's the result of a policy that's been in place since the 70s, and the results speak for themselves. Hundreds, thousands of units in regional town centers. Again, mix of uses, high density, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it works. It works great. It's the reason we're getting these increases in transit use. Well, there is no way Vancouver is going to solve its housing problem on its own within 44 square miles west of Boundary between the Fraser and Verdon. No, no, not unless you're prepared to go in to some of the existing neighborhoods, the neighborhoods that have a fabric going back 100 years or more, and say there's going to be a real change in scale and character. If you're not prepared to do that, then the amount of housing and the political capital you're going to have to spend to do it is going to be very high for very low return. Mm -hmm. You're not going to address all the housing needs on the scale necessary. You have to rely on where the SkyTrain lines go, where these regional town centers are, where the thousands of units are going to be built, and then try and make the connection so that the region remains economically prosperous and livable. Join us next time for the rest of my conversation with Gordon Price where we find out what the future holds for Vancouver real estate.